Hello everybody, welcome back to Norwich Talk for another video. Now notice how I say video there rather than a specific type of video. I think the last time I made a video was nearly two weeks ago, about a week and a half maybe, um, sort of between that time frame. Um, and that was a video about Ollie Skip just before he joined Norwich. Obviously he's joined Norwich. Um, I would encourage you to go and watch that video, but... Um, a lot of you already have, and also I think that news has sort of passed, and we're all looking forward to um, seeing Ollie Skip play for Norwich. Now, in terms of playing for Norwich, since that video, Norwich have started their pre-season campaign. Um, I think they've won all three games, they've played two games, whatever. Um, obviously, we haven't watched any of them. I didn't actually watch much of the Dresden game. I watched about 15 minutes of the second half, so I didn't think it would be right to make a video on a game that I hadn't really watched. Um, we've also released a couple of kits, which we'll get onto in this video. Um, we made a couple of signings as well, Javi Kintia and Jordan Hugel. I think they're the only two um, I'm going to chat a little bit about them again. They were two signings where I weren't, I wasn't really sort of on on the ball in terms of when them signings were made. I didn't really make a video, um, and then I didn't want to add to the existing content out there because I didn't think there was really much that I could add. Um, so in terms of videos on them, I'm sure you've already watched a lot of the other sort of fan media and, and the pinking and stuff in terms of making videos on them. Um, but I do want to touch upon them a little bit uh, more so, Jordan Hugel, because that's a, a signing that initially I wasn't that excited for at all. Um, but as sort of time goes on, I get more and more excited at the prospect of Norwich City getting a Grant Holt point two. Um, that's a very big statement and we'll get onto that a little bit later in the video. But I do want to kick off this video by talking about the two kits that Norwich City released. Now, the home kit I think is lovely. It's a bit of a rip-off, um, very unoriginal. I think the only thing that's different is the fact that the collar sort of overlaps um, and there's a couple of stripes and what have you. Um, but I'm not one to complain really because it's a very nice kit for me. Um, and if there's a kit that Norwich City were going to bring back from sort of recent history, it's that one um, because it's so simple and I'm a sucker for minimalism in that kit for me sort of sums up um, a minimalistic art style whatever you want to call it I don't want to get too technical because I don't really know what I'm talking about um, but I think we can all agree it's a very nice kit it's been seen in action and it does look very nice I'm absolutely gutted um, that we don't have the Lotus on the front I know that's the youth sponsor I think and um, sort of the younger kids t-shirt uh, football shirts um, the Lotus is on there as well I'm gutted it's not on the first team because it looks very nice um, I think it's a bit big but you know you could sort of pick apart any kit really um, to its bare bones but I'm a big fan of the um, the home kit I give it a solid 9 out of 10 for me um, that sort of one comes from its lack of originality but at the same time I'm not going to complain if they'd sort of picked a, a poorer kit to to recreate what have you I maybe would have complained a little bit more um, and it's always going to be yellow isn't it and the main thing is that it's yellow now speaking of colours we shall move on to the away kit for Norwich City where I'd say opinion has, is, is split. It isn't really. I think the sort of general consensus is that it isn't a very nice kit to look at. Um, and there is this complaint of it being blue um, and the fact that Ipswich are blue. But may I remind you, I think Norwich's original colours were blue and white as well. So maybe that's clutching at straws. Maybe it's not. Um, I don't really like the kit that much. But for me, the sentiment is there. It's obviously a kit for the heroes, the key workers. Um, and for me personally... I choose sentiment over execution. I saw a tweet. Um, I don't know who it was from. I'm, I'm really bad at remembering who tweets are from. But it was like, sentiment, brilliant, execution, poor. For me, every day of the week, you choose sentiment over execution. I totally agree with that tweet in terms of um, the sentiment was brilliant. The execution wasn't very good. But for me, sentiment, as I've, oh, I keep saying the word sentiment, it's getting annoying now, um, is, is definitely there. And I think it's been, um, uh, it's good enough. I think it'll pass. Um, but yeah, there are sort of Wigan vibes about the kit, which is uh, an interesting club. And obviously it's blue, it's switch, whatever. That doesn't fuss me too much. Um, depends how upset kits make you really. Um, speaking of kits, the one that I'm wearing right now, uh, I say kit top I'm not wearing a full kit I promise um, the top that I'm wearing right now is probably one of my favourites in recent times I'm very interested to see the third kit um, because there has been this sort of theme of Norwich sort of recreating recent history um, in terms of kits you look at the home kit um, I think that's the 2010-11 kit and then the pinstripes is sort of um, fairly similar to the 15-16 away top of which I'm a very very big fan of as well um, but we don't talk about the fact that I have Robbie Brady on the back of that top um, I've been bannered a few times for that one but in terms of the away kit, I'm, I can live with it. It's a kit, for Christ's sake, at the end of the day. If the team are going to succeed in it, um, you know, which I hope and think they will, um, then I'll have no complaints. Um, I think the only sort of complaint you can really have is that when you look back on hopefully a successful season for Norwich City, it'll be in a pretty diabolical kit. But I saw Dave Freeze a tweet um, that it'll only be worn a couple of times or a few times. And yeah, I, you know, they're, they're really, I can't look too much into the kits. Um, there's a couple of videos out there about the kits um, already, which I think were quite good. Um, fairly 
fairly enjoyable to watch. If you see it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. And it's probably fair enough. Um, and with Norwich City fans, myself included, of course, um, we're very opinionated, aren't we? Um, and sort of uh, the little, the smallest of things I'll say can sort of get picked apart. Um, but yeah, I'm very keen to see the third kit. Um, I don't think it can be much worse than the um, the away kit. But at the same time, let's remember these kits are only going to be worn a few times each. Um, but yeah, that, they're my views on the kits. Home kit, lovely. Away kit, yeah. But the sentiment is lovely, of course. Um, and that is the most important thing, of course, in this crazy time, sort of showing respect and paying tribute to the key workers um, who continue to sort of provide a brilliant service, whether it's sort of a doctor, um, a, a shop assistant, or whoever else was in the video, um, a postman whatever they're all so so important and it's so important that we we recognize their efforts and appreciate them um, and I think that kit's done that so you know as I said the sentiment is there uh, and I'm sure they'll appreciate it and as a fan of football um, and as a human being in general sort of living through this pandemic you can appreciate them as well and that kit is just a symbol of the appreciation now that's enough about the kits um, I want to speak a little bit about pre-season I've only got a couple of thoughts because as I said I can't really go into too much tactical analysis or whatever um, because I've not seen any, any of the games I've seen about 15 minutes of the Dresden game um, and then I turned it off because I actually sort of pitied the players playing on that pitch playing on that pitch well that was a mouthful wasn't it because um, it was fairly horrendous and I'm sure they're not used to that standard um, but at the same time they've picked up a clean sheet they have in all the games so far um, and I think sort of Daniel Farker's objective for this pre-season um, and obviously I think we've got one more game two more games whatever before the season starts was to sort of get the confidence back a bit and I feel like it's starting to grow um, that comes through the form of sort of bringing in some new players maybe changing the style of football a little bit more I think the way that Norwich City have scored goals I know the Revere end pointed this out on Twitter um, is that Norwich are a little bit more direct you look at Kieran Dow's assist to Adam Eder you don't really or you wouldn't have seen Norwich do that last season or the season before because it was a bit more of sort of a Ball from the back, swing one in, Eder on the end. That's not really Norwich's former style, but perhaps it's the present one um, and the one that could be um, getting us back into the Premier League. Who knows? It is pre-season, let's remember. Um, but I think the important thing is is the clean sheets um, because Norwich have had this history, not just since Daniel Farker arrived, but for such a long time where we just concede such needless goals. And the fact that Norwich haven't done it so far, touch wood, um, you know, it shows maybe a sign of improvement. I know the quality of position isn't the same as what it will be in the championship, but at the same time, um, from the perspective of the players, you play what's in front of you, and Norwich City have done a pretty good job of it so far. I think we scored six past MK Dons, but that was sort of a very experimental side from MK Dons. Um, but at the same time, it's hard not to get excited when your team score six. Um, it could be against a Sunday League team, but you'd still get very, very excited. Um, I don't no idea how the new boys are settling in at all. Um, there is one, I do want to sort of give a, I say a special mention to, to Norwich City, um, but I really am enjoying their videos um, about sort of, the, I think they're the behind the scenes videos as a fan I just love to see that content um, and I don't know why but I'm sort of I'm getting a little bit older now but they still make me giddy and just get me excited and I still am absolutely fascinated by them um, and sort of the inner workings of a, a, a prem, not a Premier League a professional football team not a Premier League team um, at the moment anyway but they'll always fascinate me and I'd very much uh, sort of push you in the direction of the Norwich City YouTube channel to go and watch them they're really well produced as well um, and yeah just the the content in general is, is very very interesting and I do love to see that sort of um Sort, sort of footage but that's that's everything on pre-season um, the expectation for me was Norwich would sort of win all the games I didn't think about it too much uh, mainly because I've got sort of a, a pre-season of my own to focus on with Deerham um, but at the same time I think Norwich are doing quite well at the moment another thing the last thing I'll mention is that it's very interesting and was very interesting to hear Daniel Farker sort of coach the team through the Dresden game and I know that was pointed out on Twitter a lot but I sort of want to mention it again because it was um, very very interesting and, and I think Hodgie tweeted that despite the sort of catastrophic end to the Premier League season, he still is a very good coach. He still is a very good man-manager. And um, the Dresden game, for me, sort of summed that up beautifully. Um, and it was very, very interesting to listen to. But that's everything for pre-season. The last two things that I want to mention thing whatever you want to call it is transfers we obviously signed Javi Kintia um, there was a little bit of concern for me that that sort of meant Jamal Lewis was off but at the moment I don't really think he is I think Sam McCallum is the more likely to leave in terms of a loan um, he didn't look brilliant against Dresden but it was 45 minutes on a horrendous pitch um, so I'll sort of I'll, I'll draw the line there with Sam McCallum um, I think that would be absolutely horrendous of me to sort of judge him for <laughs> pardon me from that 45 minutes that would be a crime um, but having Kintia maybe um, suggested that he would leave but I think Lewis uh, not Lewis Leicester sort of ended their interest apparently Liverpool obviously signed um, 
uh, a Greek left back for £11 million, I think it was. Um, just to quickly mention Liverpool fans, I don't want to be too offensive, but Jesus Christ, I don't understand why they're making it out. And the media, I suppose, um, making it out like we're holding Jamal Lewis hostage. Um, I, I don't, maybe that's a bit of a victim mentality for me, but... It's really strange, and I'm not one to sort of react to that in terms of genuinely getting angry. I find it funny, but at the same time, Liverpool's tactics were so sort of transparent in terms of sort of let's make it public, let's rattle a few cages, let's get his head turned. And for me personally, I don't think his head will have been turned. I think he's sort of a mentally strong young player, um, and I'm very interested to see how he does at Norwich. If he is to stay, that is, I, I, I think he would would stay. Um, but yeah, the the, the sort of sp- talk around it whatever you want to call it um, this whole idea that Norwich are holding Jamal Lewis hostage has been utterly bizarre um, and I, I say Liverpool fans people on Twitter will call them don't seem to be able to let it go um, which is quite weird uh, a, a weird obsession um, I mean there is sort of a bit of hate towards Norwich these days isn't there but you know I love that I love a bit of um, just being an opposition fan's heads whatever you want to call it um, but yeah that's that's sort of my, my thoughts on Kintia not really sure what he'll bring to Norwich um, he'd be a very, a very interesting signing I think there is the option to buy at the end um, if Norwich City get promoted of course but the player that I do want to talk about is Jordan Hugel now He's a player who, before joining Norwich City, I won't lie to you, I didn't really rate. I'm not going to sit here and sort of pretend that I have seen him play loads, but the times that he's played against Norwich, I sort of, you know he's there, but he hadn't really done much. Um, he scored 15 goals in the Championship last season, um, and I think the main thing is that he provides a plan B for Daniel Farker. I say a plan B, maybe it's a new plan A, because he's taken the number nine shirt. Obviously, the last time that was worn was by uh, Nelson Oliveira, wasn't it? And then Van Wolfswinkle and Grant Holt before. Now, Grant Holt, um, there's been this whole sort of thing that he's going to be Grant Holt point two, which I can see because he's a bit more raw. Um, he's got that technical ability. You can see that from his um, opening goal for Norwich City and the fact that he sort of just calmly dinked it over the goalkeeper. Um, that was very tidy for his, that type of player in terms of he's a bit more raw, he's a bit more aggressive, a bit more of a physical presence. And obviously he's, he's doing quite well in terms of talking at the moment. I think he said he wanted to get onto the pitch and sort of knock over a centre-back because he'd had a go at Puki. And that's the sort of thing that Norwich City have needed, that little bit of grit on the pitch. Now, I remember... I remember after the Sheffield United game away, I was calling for that bit of grit, that bit of hunger, that bit of desire. And that talk from Jordan Hugel, for me, suggests that he's going to bring that to the club. Um, and that really excites me. And the fact that, you know, he, he's so confident. And my God, the one thing that Norwich City need in this side at the moment is confidence. You look at, um, what, like 10 games? I don't know if it's 10 defeats in a row or 10 um, games without a win. I think it was defeats in a row uh, for Norwich City at the end of last season. How do you turn that around? Confidence. You bring a player like Jordan Hugel in who says, he literally says, I've just had the best season of my life. It can only go up from here. Um, that sort of confidence, I think Norwich, I think he'll relish at Norwich. Um, I think I've used that word right. I've got no idea. But it genuinely does excite me. Um, and the fact that he's got the number nine, the fact it's a permanent deal, um, and the fact that I think Norwich City has spent three million rising to five million pound, that sort of the figure being thrown around, suggests that he is here to sort of Maybe not be the main man. I still think Timu Puki will end up being the main man, but he's you know he's not just sort of some dosser to come sit on the bench, is he? Um, he's not a Josip Dermich who I think will probably leave Norwich. Um, you know, good riddance to him. Um, but yeah, in terms of um, transfer business as well, I do want to mention I am going to be making a few videos. Um, I'm going to make one video on sort of rating Norwich City's transfer business um, before the season starts because I think that'll be an interesting point to mention after the season, and I'll compare the two. Um, obviously, that's quite a long, long, long way um, away. There's a lot of football to be played um, a lot of twists and turns to be had um, but I do think it'll be very very interesting I'm also going to do a couple of preview podcasts hoping to get a few guests on for that um, maybe two or three probably two um, to sort of get us ready for the new season I'm so glad that we can sort of finally I say finally I'm so glad that we're talking about the new season now um, I said after the Manchester City game I was so glad to be done um, with the Premier League season I'm very much looking forward to the championship season it is the most competitive league in the world um, and you look at sort of the end of last season, I think there was sort of two or three points between sixth and third for quite a long time. And obviously the last time, not the last time, sorry, when Norwich went up via the playoffs, I think there was one point, there was a point in the season where there was a point between first and like eighth or something like that. Something crazy, something utterly bizarre. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a brilliant league. I look forward to getting back into it. Um, and also I can now stop pretending to care about the Premier League and also stop pretending to uh, to care about fantasy football for another season, which is a, a beautiful thing to say the least. But yeah, they're my thoughts on everything we spoke about in 
in this video. I'm very keen to know your thoughts, um, especially on the away kit. Jordan Hugel as well. Um, I think the rest is sort of old news, but I just thought I'd get my opinions out there. Um, I'm glad to be back making videos. Looking forward to the new season. But as I said, leave your thoughts on everything I've talked about in the comments down below. If you could like the video, I would be very, very grateful if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel. Again, a big thank you for 1,000 subscribers. Um, I would, I'd just be very happy if, you, um, if you'd stick around and sort of um, leave your comments, leave your thoughts, whatever, all that good stuff. Um, no idea when the next video will be. Hopefully it'll be soon and it will be the sort of rating the transfer business, um, which I'm very much looking forward to. Hopefully you are too. So until next time, we'll see you again very, very soon.